What is up, Impact Squad? We're going to discuss a classic Spider-Man story. It's called Spider-Man No More. But before I begin this video, hit the subscribe button and post a comment below so we could talk about this arc in the comments below. We open with Spider-Man fighting a bunch of bank robbers who Spidey is talking smack to. While the fight itself is short, we see the banker named Martha thanking Spidey for saving them from the robbers. Martha co-workers, on the other hand, is scared stiff of Spider-Man, which is important because it shows what fear mongering can do to the public at large if they do not trust or understand you. We see Peter reaching his apartment when Harry Osborn tells him that his Aunt May has fallen ill. Peter makes it to his Aunt May's house only to find Mary J. Mom looking after her, which makes Peter feel bad because he was out fighting crime so he could not be there for her in her time of need. The next morning comes by where we are at the end of Peter's test where his professor tells him his grades are slipping fast and that he is one of the smartest people and he needs to get focus on his studies. Gwen Stacy also asks Peter to a party, which Peter declines to go, which disappoints Gwen. Peter's becoming frustrated with his life because he doesn't have time to date or do anything because of his duties as Spider-Man. So Peter decides to turn on the TV to watch the news. And as you guys will probably have guessed, John Joan Jameson is on the news talking about Spider-Man. John continues to bash Spider-Man and he offers a thousand dollar reward for anyone to capture an unmasked Spider-Man. This pushes Peter over the edge because Peter realized that Jamison hates Spider-Man that much and he means every word of what he is saying. Just to sidetrack for a second, this is the nature of John John Jameson's character. He always put out publications about Spider-Man being a menace and that he's not a real hero. And that's been out throughout his whole entire publication history. Peter begins to believe what John is saying about him. He starts thinking that he only became Spider-Man for the glory of battle and the thrill, the thrill of the hunt. He begins to think that he's jeopardizing everything for for what he hasn't earned anything being Spider-Man. If, if I'm going to be honest, that is only partially true. We will revisit this topic later in the story. Peter throws away his Spider-Man costume in the trash and retires being a superhero altogether. We are now on the next day where the paperboard runs by Betty Brent. Brady Brent shows Jameson the Spider-Man costume he found in the trash. Seeing this makes Jameson extremely happy. What is funny about this is that he gives the paperboy a free copy of the Daily Bugle as a reward. Something the paperboy wasn't feeling at all. Jameson has Betty print out that Spider-Man is gone, which souls sold out the next morning. People have mixed feelings about the disappearance of Spider-Man. Every news station, talk, host, talk show host, and radio anchor begins to question if Spider-Man is really gone. This news also spreads to the underworld where Kingpin calls a meeting to all monsters to put his plan into fruitation. While the mob was having their meeting, there was a person who was observing everything from the shadow. He takes off his mask and we learn that it is Frederick Foswell, a character who hasn't been seen in a while. Just to give you guys a little brief background on Frederick Foxwell, he was a character that was created, or I should say first introduced in Spider-Man Volume 1, Issue 27. In these issues, he was known as the Big Man. Just to give you guys that little briefing of him. That guy is back, and he is working at the Daily Bugle once again, but his true motives is to get back to being the king of crime. While having a conversation with Jameson, Peter walks in the room interrupting their conversation. Peter notices the Spider-Man costume on display in Jameson's office. Try not to raise suspicion. He quits the Daily Bugle, which Jameson feels betrayed by. Foswell begins to get a little suspicious of Peter because Peter and Spider-Man quit around the same time. So he feels it's not a coincidence that both of them quit. Now, since so Spider-Man has been gone, crime in the city has gone up. Kingpin's goons get locked up, but it confirms that Spider-Man is no longer going to get in their way. So he sends them on robberies and the police ends up capturing them and, you know, they got locked up. But <laughs> Kingpin already confirmed what he was looking for. 
And then Kingpin begins to put his master plan into motion, electing himself as the chairman of crime. Switching over to Peter, who sees Gwen Station, they have a conversation about Flash Thompson, who is out on base now. Around this time, Flash was, I want to say, we'll say out in Iraq or something. And, you know, he wrote a letter to Gwen Stacy. Gwen begins to flirt with Peter, telling him that the party wasn't good because he wasn't there. Peter doesn't believe her. He makes it to his Aunt May house where he is starting to feel better. Peter walks in. He didn't even notice that Mary Jane Watson was there, which she makes a joke about. While Peter feels free now that he's no longer Spider-Man, he hears on the radio that the welfare office is getting robbed. Peter was going to leap into action when he remembered that he took an oath that he was no longer Spider-Man. The next morning, Peter has a conversation with Harry who asks him if he heard about the robberies last night. Peter decides to change the subject because he doesn't want to think about crime. So he asks Harry about his father, which was pretty smooth on his part. Peter ends up asking Gwen on a date. But she already has a date with Harry. She tries to tell Peter she has a crush on him in a roundabout way. But he doesn't believe her, telling her nice guys finish last. Peter on his own on his way home when a person is screaming for help because Kingpin's goons are shaking him down. Peter rushes to ask him because they are at the edge of the rooftop. Peter moves fast enough to where the goons can't see him and the watchman wasn't looking at him. Now if you remember, I told you that we were a visit when Peter started to believe Jameson. And that is now. You see, the watchman ended up reminding him of his uncle Ben. And that's when it hit Peter on why he became a hero in the first place. You see, for those who don't who do not know the backstory of Spider-Man, Peter was bitten by a radioactive spider that gave him his powers. He became a wrestler to make money. And he ends up letting a robber go because he felt it was not his problem to deal with it and the cops had asked him to stop him and he just let him go because he felt like it what what does he have to do with it but then he ends up going home and when he went home the cops was there and he ends up finding out that uncle ben was killed so he ends up going to go find the killer for himself and when he finds the killer he finds out it's the same guy that he could have stopped earlier and this almost caused him to have a nervous breakdown. And because of that, Uncle Bill had once told him with great powers comes great responsibility. And that's when it came to Peter that no matter who's in need of help, that he is going to help them because of the simple fact that he's doing this for Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben is the reason because if he had stopped that robber, Uncle Ben would still be alive right now. And that's why he decided that he was going to become a hero again. And I'm going to end this video because pretty much what ends up happening just for y'all. He just scales up there and he makes fun of John. He gets his costume back and then he makes fun of Jameson. And Jameson felt like he's back at rotten more than ever. And <laughs> it, it kind of ends like that. But I'm going to end it right here because i just wanted to do this type of story because i kind of like one shot type story so it gives you a perspective of the character and the thought process of a character when they do these little shorts as long as these shorts make sense and stuff and there's rumors that this also was like stan we stan lee's way who's deceased rest in peace stan lee's way of you know letting them know about marvel and how you know, it seemed like he was getting ready to get let go or quit. One of those things, I'm not 100% sure. But if you made it to the end of this video, I do thank you for listening. And I do appreciate you guys for listening to this video. I'm going to try to get more content out for you. Peace out, everyone.